More than 230 people are dead after a massive fire in a Brazilian nightclub early Sunday morning. Brazilian police say they have made three arrests and are looking for a fourth person in connection with the blaze. An early investigation into the tragedy revealed that the source of the fire came from the band's pyrotechnic show. The fast-moving fire and toxic smoke created by burning sound insulation material on the ceiling engulfed the club within seconds. Officials speculate that 90% of the victims died from breathing in poisonous gases. Many of those killed were just under 20 years old. Good evening, I'm Courtney Oliver. And I'm Matthew Neese. Welcome to the James River Valley Report. A bipartisan group of senators has reached agreement on the principles of reforming the nation's immigration laws, including a way to citizenship for the 11 million illegal immigrants already in the country. The deal also covers border security, non-citizen workers, and employer verification of immigration status. President Barack Obama is also working to propose immigration legislation and will travel to Nevada tomorrow to showcase his ideas which will correspond closely with the Senate's efforts, this according to published reports. A barge on the Mississippi River with more than 80,000 gallons of oil struck a railroad bridge early Sunday and is spreading a sheen of light crude across the waterway. The spill caused part of the corridor to be shut down to shipping traffic. At least 11 northbound vessels and 10 southbound vessels were waiting to pass today, according to a Coast Guard spokesman. The oily sheen was reported up to three miles down river. Crews have laid down a boom as well as a secondary boom, along with a rotating skimmer device to sweep up oily water. According to officials, it is unlikely the spill will affect the Gulf of Mexico, which is 340 river miles south of where the incident took place. Two September 11th defendants delayed the start of their hearing today at Guantanamo as they refused to answer questions from the judge. Self-proclaimed terrorist mastermind Khalid Sheikh Mohammed refused to say whether he approved the hiring of another attorney. Fellow defendant Walid bin Atash also refused to say why he wanted a military lawyer removed from his team. The defendant's silence delayed the start of a four-day hearing in pretrial motions for five Guantanamo prisoners charged in the case. Federal officials say at least 16 people in five states have been sickened by salmonella food poisoning stemming from ground beef. So far, no one has died, but half were hospitalized. Most of the cases have been in Michigan, with others being in Arizona, Illinois, Iowa, and Wisconsin. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said the cases have been linked to the recall of more than 1,000 pounds of ground beef from two Michigan businesses. President Barack Obama met with officials from three communities that have experienced mass shootings as part of his administration's push to address gun violence. Obama invited police chiefs from Aurora, Colorado, Oak Creek, Wisconsin, and Nuketown, Connecticut to take part in a meeting in Washington. Representatives from the major city's police chiefs association and the major county sheriff's association, two national law enforcement groups, were also in attendance along with Vice President Joe Biden, Attorney General Eric Holder, and Department of Homeland, Homeland Security Janet Napolitano. Well, we felt a slight warm-up today from the cold North Dakota winter. Jessica Golseth is in next to tell us what we can expect for the rest of the week when we come back. Check out this chef, right? <laughs> so gay. Please don't say that. It's like if I thought this pepper shaker was stupid and I said, man, this pepper shaker is so 16-year-old boy with a cheesy mustache. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Learning how to kick flip six stairs takes determination. So we're getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. With new health care reform comes many changes, and North Dakota will be affected just as much as the next state. In 2010, about 80,000 people, or 13%, of North Dakota's population didn't have health insurance. The Affordable Care Act will seek to reduce the number of uninsured people by providing government subsidies to some workers who can't afford insurance. North Dakota's Medicaid program currently covers about 65,000 people a month. The State Department of Human Services proposed an expansion to add another 30,000 people. The federal government would cover the full cost of expanding Medicaid through 2016. North Dakota farmers and ranchers will have an extension to file taxes. The in Internal Revenue Service announced it was extending the date for federal returns from March 1st to April 15th. The extension is due to the late timing of changes made by Congress, 
affecting the IRS's ability to accept and process tax forms. Valley City State University's online Master of Education program is ranked as a top program in the second annual edition of Top Online Education Program Rankings by U.S. News & World Report. VCSU's Master of Education earned the number 22 spot out of 143 and is the only program offered by a North Dakota college or university to be ranked in the category. The commander of the North Dakota National Guard's Camp Grafton Training Center at Devil's Lake is retiring after 36 years of service. Colonel Dave Rickford began working full-time for the Guard in 1985. The camp offers many training operations from cooking school to demolition ranges. He has been in charge at Camp Grafton for the past two years. Rickford was awarded the Federal Legion of Merit. And turning to weather, Jessica Gulseth is out on the campus. Jessica, what's going on out there? It's almost like we've got some superheroes around here on campus because everyone thinks they're invincible. We've got people wearing shorts, people wearing jeans and sweat sweatshirts, and it's probably because it's about 27 degrees outside, probably the first time in weeks that we've seen positive temperatures, and it just kind of feels good to get out and feel like maybe it's not January and we're not living in North Dakota, but in fact we are, and this weather won't be sticking around for very long. Tonight, in fact, we're going to be seeing about a 50% chance of snow, and we're going to see about a half an inch to an inch worth of snow um, until about Tuesday morning, and We'll talk about the rest of the week. In fact, we're going to see negative temperatures starting tomorrow night, and that will carry on through Saturday. So I just kind of want to remind people that it is January, you do live in North Dakota, and it's winter. But we'll talk about the rest of the week inside. Well, Jessica, it was pretty warm out there, but I still don't think it was warm enough for shorts. I agree. You know, might you might be able to skip out on the mittens for today, but <laughs> I don't feel like shorts is correct. <laughs> Today seemed a little out of character, but like I already said, the rest of the week will be normal, for lack of a better word. Tonight, a 50% chance of snow with an accumulation of about half an inch. We're looking at about a 20% chance of snow for most of the day tomorrow as well, picking up to a 30% chance of snow later in the evening. It'll be mostly cloudy with a high near 21 and a low of negative 6 for the night. So, a little warmer for the day, but then a drastic drop once the sun goes down. And, unfortunately, it won't be getting warmer as the sun rises Wednesday morning. Only a high of negative 4 for the day with blustering winds as low as negative 18. So once again, very cold. Thursday, partly sunny for the day, but that won't have an effect on the weather. We're still seeing negative temperatures. A high of negative 11 and a low of negative 19. Friday will be the first day we'll see temperatures reach above zero. A high of 19 with a 20% chance of snow and a low of 11. So we'll stick with those positive temperatures all the way through the day and into the weekend. Saturday a high of 22 and a low of 8 and Sunday will be warmer yet. Almost 30 degrees. Well it sure is good to see those positive temperatures. Yes, it's fantastic. It feels great. <laughs> Alright, well thanks Jessica. And after the break, Josh Knudsen has sports and Matt Neese tells us how Subway came up a few inches too short. Severe weather can destroy a home in seconds. There's no time to think, only time to act. Have a kit so you're ready for any emergency. Develop a plan for what you and your family will do before disaster strikes. And stay informed during severe weather any way you can. It can be the difference between losing your possessions and losing your life. Just ask the owners of this house. Visit weather.com ready and let the Weather Channel help you prepare your family for emergencies. Mom, can I have a dollar? I think my purse is upstairs on the bed. It's not here. Check the dining room. No, the upstairs closet. Moms everywhere are finding closet. ways to keep kids active and healthy. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. It was a good weekend for both Jimmy's basketball squads, and women's wrestling continues their quest for a championship at Nationals. And Josh Knutson is here to tell us what's going on. So Josh, fill me in. How is wrestling going? How is basketball going? Well, Matt, there's, there's quite a bit going on. Uh, wrestling's doing well. They've had eight wins so far, and we'll get to that later. The Jimmy women's basketball team was in action Thursday when they hosted the Mayville State Comets just four days after beating them in the Dakota Tip-Off Classic Tournament. This time, however, the outcome of the game would be different. 
Sabrina Rude's game-high 24 points helped make sure that the Comets would not lose two games in a row to the Jimmies. At one point in the game, the Jamestown women found themselves down by 26 points, but were able to battle back and cut the lead to 10 with two minutes left. However, not even Hannah Steele's team-high 19 points sorry, were enough to bring home a win, as the Jimmies lost the game 79-92. And eight Jimmy women have won a match so far at the Women's College Wrestling Association Nationals in Bristol, Tennessee. At 109 pounds, Amy Fahrenside has won by a pin. At 123 pounds, Tiffany Sluick won by a pin. Shailen Tan won by a pin. And Alicia Hubert won by a pin. At 155 pounds, Christina Zamora won by a pin. At 170 pounds, Lilia Gudziok won by a decision. And at 191 pounds, Erie Bragg won by decision. And Chelsea Fleming won by a pin. The Jamestown men's basketball team was in action Sunday as they hosted Oglala Lakota at the Jamestown Civic Center. The Jimmy shot 54.5% from the field and made 12 of 22 three-pointers in a 113-59 win. Six players scored double figures for Jamestown, with Devin Thomas leading the way with 26 points. The Jimmies play at rival Valley City State at 7.30 p.m. Wednesday. The Jimmy men's wrestling team was able to take second place at the Jimmy Open as they recorded 10 pins during the event. Dylan Kiefer scored two pins, including one over Joe Wilkins of Jamestown College, and won a decision over Will James of South Dakota State to take first place at 141 pounds. Michael Nord was also able to take first place at 165. He was able to score four consecutive pins for his team. In other notable action from the Jimmy Open, Colby Horner took second at 133 pounds with three pins and a tiebreaker loss in the third round against his opponent from South Dakota State. And with spring training beginning next month, most major leaguers and their fans are looking towards the 2013 season. The Minnesota Twins in particular are looking at what to do with all-star catcher Joe Maurer. The organization had a plan last year to keep Joe Maurer's bat in the lineup. They stopped using him exclusively as a catcher and put the 6'5 veteran at first base as well as DH to reduce wear and tear on his body. The plan worked as Maurer played in a career high 147 games and returned to be known as one of the best hitters in the American League after a less than impressive 2011 season. Now that the number seven is completely healthy, general manager Terry Ryan says that the target is 125 games behind the plate for Maurer. That would be a significant increase over the 74 he caught last season. And the NFL equivalent to the All-Star Game, the NFC defeated the AFC 62-35 Sunday in a 42nd annual Pro Bowl, played in Honolulu, Hawaii. The AFC squad had five turnovers on the day and scored most of its points after the game was already out of reach. Minnesota Vikings tight end Kyle Rudolph was voted the Pro Bowl MVP after making five catches and a touchdown. And Matt, that wraps up a very uh, variety-filled weekend in sports. Well, thanks, Josh, for, for uh, bringing that to us. And uh, Hawaii is definitely hot this time of year. And it sounds like the Jimmy Men basketball team is heating up, too. Absolutely. All right, thank you very much, Josh. And finally tonight, Subway is apologizing that its foot-long sandwiches are not the full 12 inches. The fast food chain faced criticism after a man posted a photo online showing the foot-long next to a tape measure revealing the sandwich to be just 11 inches long. The company noted that bread length could vary when franchises don't bake to its exact specifications and that they would reinforce policies to ensure consistency. Oh, the pitfalls of coming up an inch short. And that's the James River Valley Report for this Monday, January 28th. For Courtney Oliver, Jessica Golseth, and Josh Knudsen, I'm Matthew Neese. Thank you for joining us. Good night.